opening comment would mean it's not being read by the computer. So this is where you put your comments or anything not read by the computer. Well, read by the programmer, for the programmer. Oh yeah, for the programmer. And that's where you close it. So that's the opening, closing, everything in between is not read by the computer. It's good for toggling or enabling and disabling code without deleting it. And for comments too. That's actually the code that is going to send the signal. Listen for, listens for all sorts of signals, and it just happens you're just listening to one right now. Yeah. But uh, that plugin file is about ten, little, about ten lines of code of just loading the, the Google API that sets up this geolocation. So it goes with this, eh? It's yeah. All part of the same. So it calls geolocation, and it sets parameter one to the object that has dot city dot region and whatever our par one. Par one is your variable, yeah. which you get from here, right? Yeah, it just means parameter one. And you got parameter two in some cases. So we'll use that later. Line 14 is saying you're making a layer and you're naming it main. And then the first property is saying it's an iframe tag. That's this body here? Yeah. Which allows you to just point a web address to it and it'll load it like a web browser. So the black ground's back black only when this thing loading, right? Yeah. So it's always loading so you can get rid of the black background. No, it would happen if it didn't load or let's say uh, be transparent then. That source has two tabs at it in the beginning, it doesn't need two tabs. One? Yeah. It's inside the main iframe. So back on red, here, that's this background. Yeah, the whole body. The whole body. I could put it, a picture back there if I wanted to, right? Yeah. So it's with this kind of thing. No, that's, oh yeah, it's an image. That's an image layer, but you can also put a image in the background of any other layer. 10 and 11 is some image. You probably don't need that anymore. Main, that's your main body? Is that yeah, that's your main frame, like your main browser. This? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your web browser inside of a browser. So you made an iframe? Yeah, that's the type of tag you have to name it to have that feature. To link to websites? Yeah. It has to be an iframe? Yeah. Well, it could be a normal frame, but then normal frames you got to split your screen in half or something like that. Where an iframe you can make a box. It's 12% here. 12% from the left, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or over. It's 11% uh, here. 11% from the top. Oh yeah, of your whole screen. Yeah. And then... Well, of the, of and whatever it, parent. Then it's 85% across, starting at the 12%, right? Yeah. And then you want to go right to the bottom, or that's how it's set, so I say 100%. Yeah, but really it should be like 89%, because 11% plus 89 is yeah. 100%. Well, that's why I got the... A little scroll bar. Scroll bar here. A little quick fix there. Here? Yeah, so there you can go one or two pixel PX um, border. How do I put color? Border is the name of it, and two pixel solid is the value. So you'll, you can have a value of two pixel red solid or two pixel solid. Like just put the color in there somewhere. As long as border is at the end. Border is what you're setting here, so you can have a, a red. Red border? Yeah, just have to have space red. Like that? Yeah. It doesn't have to be solid either. You can say words like dashed or dotted or inset or outset. Right here? Yeah, That'd instead of solid. So try dashed because it's a money saving, uh, maybe green dashed. And then 
instead of solid. Dash D A S H. E D, I think. See it? Yeah, it looks like a coupon though. Isn't that money saving? That loads up when you load a new. Okay, so line 14 now equals the picture of a dollar sign, which we got off Google. Button press equals zero means it's this. And what this is, is whatever you click on, that object equals this. So when you click on this, this equals button press. Button press is your variable. Your, your variable starts off at zero. When it's zero, it fails to do that black thing on line 26. Like no, every one you click on sets it to red. But the first one you click on doesn't set the previous one to black. Because it has, doesn't exist yet. Well, when you first when you first refresh it, right yeah. now there's no previous one yet because you haven't clicked anywhere. So that'd be a glitch if you say previous one go back to black. So yeah. that's why you got to check. Where's the previous one? Yeah. So it says if there is no previous one, it's zero, yeah. which is right now when you first come here. Yeah. Okay. So saying that the zero was like saying there is no previous. You can't set. So then it prevents the set previous button that you press back to black which would glitch out or would be an error so line 16 is our title of the page type just some text in the center of the page at the top can't see it because it blends in with the background and we could change the text to anything stretching monkey <laughs> button names refers to each button and starts off as button zero, like a button one, button two, button one, that's where it gets its name, that's where city gets its name, that's where weather gets its name. So all these names refer to the buttons in the order that, according to what we set the button name to be. Button name one will get the text city. So we could change city to Mooses. And it works. Okay. You're explaining line 19. So button is an HTML tag. That's this is button. It's a tag. And this is where I put it. Zero from the, the left, so it starts right at the mark right where the page starts. 12% down, so it's just 1% lower than the iframe. 10% across, and this button is 7% high. Of the whole page, it's 7%. Yeah. So that way when we do weird scrolling effects, it stays proportional. 22 pixel font size is the how many pixels high these fonts are. But this particular one refers to this button. So the text comes from line 19. Uh, log in because it's button 0. 0 is the first one. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 is login. This button name, which is. Or the array. I guess I call it. In line 19, you're creating an array or a list. Or a list. In JavaScript, you call it array. Button is the HTML thing you ever described it. Yeah. Line 20 is a button layer. Line 19's button names is a list of st strings or words. The font is 22 pixels. And it gets its text from line 22, referring to this list. And where it happened to be button 0, so it gets text 0, which is logged in. Minimum width. So it means oh. if you uh, resize your thing so it's really, really small, your yeah. button won't get any smaller than 100, minim 100 so that, pixels. That's the minimum width there. Yeah. 100 pixels. So when you. Scroll in, it doesn't get any smaller. Yeah, but it will get bigger. See how it's bigger than. 
you can also use maximum if you wanted to get a little bigger but not too big you know like stretch it a oh, little yeah. bit then you get a pretty only precise. stretch it this much yeah. very similar but max so use the minimum as the well first the number and then max No, the number before the word. Oh, yeah, let's see. So log in, yeah. Because it only refers to that button. That's why you could see it there. Okay. That explains the minimum and maximum a little bit. And these refer to the border radius of the buttons. We got seven pixels giving us at opposite corners, giving us a rounded corners or in a function somewhere saying oh, and click do the opposite that's what we're getting these little corner effects here's where it switches oh that's an array so and then you just pick the number in the array so number zero equals text login you can say element number zero is login of the array button names then when I click on it on this, so it knows on click this, this button the color goes red. Until I click off it, then it goes black. And when I click on it, it knows what website to go because of this line, main dot source. So when I click on it, it goes to summary. Click on the weather, it goes to the weather. And main points to line 11. Kind of like line 12. 11 and 12. And these two lines do the switch in the text. See? If it equals this on the click, make it equal that. But name equals this text. So if, so if enter HTML equals login, HTML should equal logout. And the border radius gets switched. Yeah, and then at the same time it goes click the other way. So on click, these little things go one way, and on next click they go the other way. Switch from this to that, which is log in. Log out, log in. And the rest is kind of a repeat of this button. So how would I make an image here? Yeah, leave a red background equals red and add an image. Underneath? Well, the image will go over top of the red. Uh, you'd probably want to do it before main, or else we'll go over top of main. Just shows money coming out of everything. <laughs> yeah. Red is a layer, and image is a layer inside of the red layer. Instead of image equals that, you can go background. See how you got background equals red? You can say background yeah. equals URL and then that path. Parentheses, like the rounded brackets. And inside the path. And end it with a period or a rabbit with quotations. You don't you no longer need that image though. Line thirteen and fourteen are no longer there. Need it. Because you did it. Since you needed it repeating, the background is the best way. So we wanted to remember, last time you're on the site, what site you're, you're on, what button. And we want it to be highlighted when you come on, or the button. Because right now when it comes on, like the weather channel comes on, but the weather button ain't on. That's our mission. Right now we, we need to uh, use uh, something called local storage, which is the name for browser memory. If you keep going back to this, you'll remember it in the browser, mm -hmm. but if you switch browsers, it's not going to remember. Yeah. To declare these type of variables, you actually got to name them a little differently.